Hints and some interesting real estate facts. It's The Real Estate Show. Show. My name is Rick Naples, broker owner of Zone Realty LLC, you zone your home. Today's show we're going to look at some fun facts concerning real estate from around the world. But before we get to those presentations, I want to talk about four easy tips of things to remember once you've bought a home and you've moved in. You know, we talk a lot here on the real estate show about preparing to purchase a home or sell a home. But once the deed is done, what are some of the things you should do right away? Well, the very first thing on my list, of course, is to change the locks. Over the years, when you live in your home, you tend to give out keys to friends, relatives, or trusted partners for that just-in-case scenario. So you don't remember where all those keys are, nor do sometimes you remember to collect all those keys when you sell the property. So the buyer, when they purchase the home, the first thing that they should do is change all the locks, especially the front and rear doors of the home. Any other locks that are concerning the property should also be changed. You know, sometimes that's a little bit of an expense, but in the long run, it's the best thing to do as far as your safety and peace of mind is concerned. One of the other things you need to do is to familiarize yourself with the operations of the home. Now, what I mean by that is, know where the water shut off valve is, know where the electrical box is, and what circuits control where throughout the home, so that you're familiar, so in the case of an emergency, you know where to go or how to do uh, to shut off those things or switch off those things should you need to do that. Another tip is service to the home. You want to make sure that everything has been switched over to your name as the new owner. Electrical service, gas service, you want to set up delivery with your oil service if oil is your fuel and so on and so forth. You know a lot of times the utility companies take a while to get things switched over to new owners you're usually going to be advised by your realtor that before you're closing make sure you make those calls and you give the closing time and date to the utilities so that they can target switching over all that stuff to your name. And then the last thing I want to mention as far as things that you want to do right away when you get into your home is take an assessment of your tools. Nobody talks about this. You know everybody has usually standard tools. Everybody has a hammer and a screwdriver and a couple of wrenches and simple tools like that for puttering around the house and doing little things. But when you own a home there may be some specialty tools that you might need in order to maintain your home up to the standards you would like. A lot of times a ratchet wrench or an adjustable wrench is something that you're going to want to invest in or any specialty type tools for anything that the house has that you're going to need in order to get into those items or fix those items or maintain them. So you want to assess your toolbox. So change your locks, make sure your electrical services and all the other utility services have been switched over to your name. Look around, see what kind of specialty tools you may have to add in order to maintain your house. Uh, to the standards that you want to maintain it to and make sure that you know how the house functions, where your main shutoff valves are and what circuits go to what electrical uh, services throughout the home in case of an emergency. Now let's sit back and watch this presentation. I call it a mini movie. I had gathered a bunch of interesting facts on the internet and put together a slideshow and some of these things are quite unusual. Let's sit back and take a watch.
see anything in that presentation that was eye-opening? I saw a couple of things that I was unaware of. We're talking here and we're showing real estate facts on the real estate show. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about is some of the things that you do when you move into your home. Now earlier I had mentioned four major things to do as soon as you move into your home. There are a number of other things that you want to do. You're going to start making plans to make changes to the home. You know, many of us will move into a home and the decor or the styles of the previous owner have been imprinted on the house and you want to make it your own. You might want to start with making a list of the things that you're planning to do, whether it's changing paint colors or maybe doing some remodeling or rearranging things, changing out carpets or whatever that might be. You want to make a list so that you can make sure that you're doing things that are going to add value to the home should in the future you decide to resell it. You want to be very careful on some of the remodeling projects that you do do on the home because some of those remodeling projects may be specific to your needs but may not add value to the home when it comes time to resell it. Make sure you do your research and your due diligence as far as the advice that is given through realtors and also on the internet. There are many different sites out there that give you all kinds of information on what remodeling or what renovation projects are going to give you the biggest bang for the buck. So do your research, take your time, make your home yours, but at the same time, keep in mind you're trying to make it pay off in the long run. Let's take a look at some more interesting facts about real estate. some of those, you know, do-it-yourself type programs that you see all the time. And I picked up a couple of interesting hints when it came to landscaping. One of the things I wanted to share to you that you might want to do once you moved into a new home is take the walk around the outside of the home and look at the way the plantings and the grading is done against the foundation of the house. You want to make sure that everything is sloped away from the home so that you don't have any situations where water might run into the basement. Look at your drainage spouts. Look at the way water is taken away from the home once it comes down your gutters. Now, a lot of times if you're buying an older home, you can request, if the inspector has made a notation of it, to have the gutters and the downspouts cleaned before you move in, especially if the house is located in a heavy wooded area. You want to make sure that your home inspector, when they're up on the roof, is looking at those particular situations. Because again, you want to head off any problems that may happen 
down the road as far as the maintenance and keeping your house in good order. One of the other things you want to do is look at the plantings. Uh, I recently sold a home where there was a large bush near the main entrance. And at the time the home was purchased, the bush had not flowered yet. Well, it looked very nice next to the front entrance. and had obviously been there for a number of years because it was a very mature, mature plant. Well, what had happened was as the spring and the summer came along, that bush began to flower. Of course, flowering, it started to attract the bees, naturally. Uh, because of the bees on the flowering plant, it made it difficult in order to use the front entrance as a regular way of going in and so in and out of the house. The previous owner used the side entrance and never really used the front door of the house, so it was not an issue. But the buyer of the home had rearranged things where they wanted to use the front door or the main entrance of the house as their main way of coming and going. So, of course, on their list, was to get rid of that bush, even though it had been there for a number of years. So just interesting little things to take a look at. Let's look at this other presentation on some more unusual tips, or some more unusual facts, I should say, about real estate from around the world. As we've been looking at the different presentations of some of the unusual and strange facts about real estate from around the world, I always like to mention that I've always found real estate to be fascinating. There's always something new to learn in the real estate industry. Realtors are constantly educating themselves as to the different aspects of things as far as a real estate transaction is concerned in order to make sure that they can advise their clients properly when it comes to selling or buying a home. But sometimes it's also a little bit fun to look at some of the other things besides just the paperwork and the real estate transaction. A real estate deal, when it comes together, involves a lot of different personalities. And one of the things that I always like to do is try to get to know everyone that's going to be involved in the real estate deal not only working with the agent on the other side, in other words, if I'm representing the seller, I'm working with the buyer's agent, or if I'm representing the buyer, I'm working with the seller's agent, but also all the other people that are involved in the real estate deal. Not only the buyer and the seller and their individual agents, but you also have the representatives of each side. In the buyer's case, you have the home inspector, you have the mortgage officer, you have the appraiser, you have the attorney, on the seller side you have the attorney, just a number of different people. Let's not forget the paralegals that put all the paperwork together. So you want to kind of make sure you know who's in play as you go through the transaction and as you go through the real estate negotiation 
to make it as smooth and easy as a process as possible. It's not easy to buy a home by yourself. There are a lot of other people that are involved in the decision making process. You want to concentrate as a buyer on finding the home that you wish to purchase, getting into that home and making it your own. As a seller, you want to sell your home so that you can move on either to your next home or your next stage of life or whatever it might be. But always keep in mind, it's not just the buyer and the seller. There are a lot of other folks that get involved in order to make the real estate transaction or real estate deal come together. This is the portion of the real estate show I call the real estate mailbag. It's my opportunity to address questions that are sent here to the real estate show, asked to me when I'm out and about on the street, or even that just come up in conversation when I'm sitting with other people or sitting with realtors at general meetings and so on and so forth. A lot of times we talk when we're amongst ourselves, the realtors, about the transactions. And sometimes, generalistically, because we don't talk about privacy uh, of our buyers or our sellers, but we talk about different transactions and some of the challenges that come up in making those transactions come together. And it's really interesting because not all transactions are exactly the same. Yes, there are a number of procedures that you go through and a number of steps that you can say, okay, first there's putting the house on the market, then there's getting an offer, then there's doing a home inspection, and so on and so forth. Those are tried and true. But along the way, you have many other things that get involved. Things you may have to negotiate on that you weren't aware of when you made the first offer because of the home inspection. Maybe an appraisal issue happens. Maybe there's a situation with the buyer as far as providing the information that's needed in order to obtain the mortgage commitment. So there's a number of different challenges. And then, of course, there's a little-known thing called the title search. Before you close on your home, the attorney is going to do what's called a title search. Now, this is when they look at the history of the home and the transfers of ownership as the house has aged throughout the years. They want to make sure that you're going to get what's called a clear title. In other words, when you purchase that home, the home is yours. Uh, it, there's no one else that still has title or usage of that home. Sometimes issues come up in those title searches and this is where the attorneys come into play to do the necessary steps that are needed in order to make sure again that the title, the ownership is going to transfer over to the new buyer from the seller. Again, as I mentioned earlier and I mentioned here in this commentary, it takes a team of people to put together a real estate transaction. Get to know who the players are so you take all your stress away and you can move into your new home or sell your home with little or no problems. My name is Rick Naples. This has been The Real Estate Show. I thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.